Hey there, everyone. Um, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded something on this channel, five months to be exact, but I'm back now, and with me I have this very special build. It's honestly one of my best price-to-performance PCs to this date, and I can't wait to share with you all what it is capable of. Before we get into all the gaming action, however, let's go over the parts. So for the CPU of this build, I've chosen the Ryzen 7 5700X with an incredible 8 cores, 16 threads on the Zen 3 architecture. This CPU is one of the best budget gaming CPUs you can get on the market. Well, budget is kind of stretching it. But for the 250 Aussie dollars I paid for it, I think it's worth it. Now, lucky for us, the 5700X isn't a hard CPU to cool, so I got the trusty Thermalrite Assassin X120 RSE CPU cooler. Now, as someone who uses this CPU cooler for their own 5700X, I can personally vouch for its incredible performance keeping my 5700X under 80 degrees, even under intense gaming loads, and it comes with free thermal paste too. As for the motherboard, I think I've secured a pretty solid choice for one off of eBay. This is the MSI B450A Pro Max, one of the first motherboards to implement a BIOS flashback feature. And it's overall a very solid board with good VRMs and all the features you'll need on a motherboard. Except for Wi-Fi, but that's not really required when you're paying only 82 Aussie dollars for a motherboard. Going with Zen 3 gives us a pretty huge advantage in terms of RAM pricing as DDR4 is dirt cheap these days. I got this 16 gig kit of DDR4 clocked at 3600 MHz CL18 from G-Skill for just 51 Aussie dollars and with its black color scheme, it will blend in just fine with our build. Those who follow PC tech news might be aware of this, but NVMe SSD prices have been skyrocketing for months now. But luckily, I got a few of these 1TB SSDs from Silicon Power as part of M-Wave's promotional sale at PAX Australia 2023. They were selling these for 50 Aussie dollars a pop and I could not resist. Even though I was supposed to be there for the actual con to hang out with friends. Anywho, let's talk about the main gaming power source of this system. This is the RTX 3070 a card that needs no further introduction. The gaming performance is just beastly even with only 8 gigs of VRAM and this is the Zotac Twin Edge OC version which I managed to luckily snag along with an identical card for 368 Aussie dollars a pop and it's in pretty much brand new condition too so that's a bonus. Don't be fooled by this box, I'm not using a Corsair 850W power supply for this PC. It is instead a Cougar VTX 600W 80 plus bronze power supply. Now I know the general consensus for PC building is not to cheap out on the power supply since the most important component, but this unit is not half bad and with the 3070 only consuming up to 225 watts of power, Hell, you could even daisy chain the cables if you really want it. And this unit should provide ample power to get the whole thing up and running. I'm going to keep it real with you all. I went with the cheapest case I could buy on the market to house this build. This is the Aza Prime RGB tempered glass case. And um, don't let the 50 AUD price tag fool you. It does have a genuine tempered glass side panel and four. RGB fans which should really spice up the look of the whole thing. With all these incredible budget PC parts in hand, I believe we have the recipe for a truly monstrous gaming PC. So let's get started and build this thing, shall we?
this beautiful build being done, let's fire her up. I just want to take this time to mention that for Ryzen, it usually takes a while to train the memory on first boot, so it might take a while for you to get to the bio splash screen, so don't panic. Just sit and wait until something shows up. And as you can see here, this took me quite a while. So yeah, it's just like I warned, it's gonna take quite a bit to train memory. It really depends from system to system, but yeah, usually the black screens like these are normal. And uh, you'll just have to wait until there's a splash screen that shows up and a prompt that tells you to press F1 to go to setup, which will lead you straight to the BIOS, as you can see here. So yeah, with the BIOS pretty much being accessible now, I'll just install Windows, install some games, and get the benchmarks going.
also we've reached the end of the video so first off I just want to say that there's a lot to take away with a system like this so starting with my first point Ryzen 7 5700X still kicks ass RTX 3070 still kicks ass you don't need the latest and greatest to start gaming at high resolutions or high FPS this system is easily capable of 1440p or even 4K, but since I only have a 1080p monitor, you're stuck with 1080p tests, so that's kind of my bad. But still, um, yeah, for sub $600, I'm pretty happy with this system. Um, it outperforms my expectations in both gaming performance and temperatures and overall stability for the price and yeah that makes me really happy with what I've managed to build here so I hope you enjoyed it too like the video if you enjoyed it dislike it if you didn't uh, subscribe if you want to see all my future PC builds and content and I hope to see you all around take care